welcome to another episode of Cruising Israel. I'm your host, Natalie. And I'm Max. You know, Max, Israel has been around for not that long of a time, and it's still managed to, you know, have all these reputations of being the leading country in high-tech, medical devices, startup. Not just that, even regarding the environment. Israel's been an early adopter of some really important things regarding the conservation of our environment. That is very true. You know, that gave me an idea, Max. Oh, what's your idea? I know of a place not too far from Tel Aviv called the Solar Garden. For about a century, environmental awareness and the importance of its protection has been spreading and has really picked up momentum in the past decade. With Israel having this reputation of doing more with less, Israel is at the forefront of this growing movement. Creativity and innovation has led Israel to be amongst one of the leading countries in green technology. Some may even describe this tiny nation as a sustainability superpower. Mmm. Mm, tasty. <laughs> Today we're here to learn what it means to be environmentally aware and how to manage our planet's resources properly. We're here at Solar Park and how do you guys go about giving out this message to people? So first of all we give a lot of examples. Uh, people come here and then they see all the little uh, details in the place and then they ask questions. And just by asking questions, if it comes from them, they learn the best way. Yaniv's sustainability tour focuses mainly on solar energy and other alternative sources of energy as well. He answers questions like where energy comes from and what really happens to our garbage. It looks like we are going to learn a lot today, so let's begin the tour. All right, let's go. Our first stop was the geodesic dome, which was solely made up of waste materials. And you'll never guess what the bench was created from. So what are these benches made out of? So these are made out of uh, old tires that we compacted with earth, and then we uh, covered them with a very small layer of uh, cement, but uh, you can see that we, uh, we brought in some uh, artists to make this yeah. specific thing. Absolutely nothing at the solar garden goes to waste, and as you can see, many materials are completely taken out of context and reused. It's sort of like a trend that's going on around Tel Aviv. Even the finest restaurants, you can see them reusing materials and furniture. One of the really nice restaurants that we went to, actually their counter was made out of cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. Yeah, I'm hoping it's not just a trend, but a real change, because people need to start seeing the resources for what they are. Behind us here we have a vertical garden. Tell mm -hmm. us how this works and what are the benefits of a vertical garden? So the Green Wall project is actually a project that we've been doing for the last three years. Uh, we do it mostly in schools but also in a lot of communities and it has a lot of benefits and also all kinds of green values that we want to teach by building the Green Wall. So for instance, the first thing is you can realize that we build it from plastic bottles. So we're reusing plastic bottles. We're bringing more plants into uh, usually urban areas, so we're reducing sound and we're making insulation for the walls. Vertical gardens or green walls can be built on any wall and are not only great for the environment, but also useful for enhancing bare walls as an interior design element. So I want to show you something very cool. Okay, okay so this is the energy compound that we're entering now. And uh, one of the new, uh, New exhibits that we have is a special sun cooker, mm -hmm. which is this. Oh. And we can actually, you can have a seat, and uh, this can actually cook our food. It can be used just as a regular uh, oven, just like you use in the house. And uh, you can cook bread, you can cook, you know, potatoes or anything you want, uh, Only right with inside. The sun. Only with the sun, wow, using really nothing impressive. else. The sun rays shine directly onto the vacuum tube, trapping the energy of the sun inside. So you're telling me that we could cook some vegetables in there, we could maybe boil an egg? Yes we can, <laughs> if wow, we want. To Today, 90% of Israeli homes use solar energy to heat water. So, let's check out another way to utilize the sunshine. Another thing I'd like to show you is the way we explain how a sun tower works. A sun tower actually collects the heat of the sun using a lot of mirrors. All the mirrors 
concentrate the sun to the top of the tower, and then you can heat the water and turn it into vapor and make electricity. Okay, this is what it looks like in uh, in uh, real life. Okay, and it's a miniature version exactly. Of it. So this is a very very small version of it, and we can see how it works. I actually use this to show the people and to let them feel how the sun is concentrated. So you can actually put your hand in the place where the sun is concentrated. Let's see, oh, there it is. And you can feel the heat. You wanna try? Yeah. Right over there. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So this okay. is gonna start a fire? Well, if I put a piece of cardboard inside and I leave it there for long enough, it might start a fire. It depends on how hot the sun is at that day. It's pretty strong today. Okay, so you wanna give it a try? All right, so let's just put a piece of cardboard. Didn't go. Well, it made a hole right Yeah, it made a hole. That's there we pretty go. impressive. Not only does the solar garden offer hands-on, multi-sensual activities and workshops around the garden, but brings these projects out to schools all around the country. Developing the garden was no easy task, but they had help from volunteers eager to turn waste materials into something more useful. There were so many people helping uh, in the process. We had over 200 volunteers coming here from all over the world, from many, many different countries, living here for two weeks, one month, and even six months. Most of them are either travelers or people who uh, want to find a better way to come to Israel and uh, kind of contribute and also get to know the culture a little bit more. Uh, when they come here, it's a little bit different than being just a regular tourist because here they kind of connect to a community and they see how the people live in Israel. I've always felt a connection with Israel. I was born here and I have a lot of family here, but um, I grew up in the States, so I'm always trying to find an excuse to come back and volunteering something that's really beneficial um, for not just me, but for the whole community here in Israel. It's appealed to me because it's a sustainability teaching and learning center. There are more and more sustainable options being implemented in new ways in Israel, and many visionaries working to enable a more healthy, green environment. People need to understand that each of us plays a role in how the environment will be kept. And if each of us does his own thing, each of us gives just a little push, so uh, together we can make the environment a much, much better place for all of us. You know, Max, we have visited countless markets around the country, and that's what Israel is known for. It's vibrant markets. They're all over the place. Yes, Damn they Asian. are. Guess what we're doing now? I got to assume by your leading statements that we're going to be going and checking out yes, another market. Yes, a new market has hit the streets just north of Tel Aviv. Oh, so not It's convenient, far. gourmet food, affordable prices, so why not? Wow, it sounds like you're really excited about this thing. All right, well, let's not wait any longer. Let's go. Israel is home to tons of markets, where you'll find some of the country's finest selection of tasty goods. And let's face it, a trip to the Middle East is not complete without paying a visit to one of the markets. So, today we are here at Shukat Zafon. Let's check them out. The trend of gourmet markets has been growing in recent years. High quality ingredients are coupled with unique flavors that have been joined together through a passion for food. The best part about the shuk is that you could have a taste of so many different cultures without even leaving the country. With a huge eclectic mix of cuisines, there is a little something for everybody to enjoy. When you think of the shuk, which translates to marketplace, the word gourmet doesn't really come to mind. But that all changed here at Shuk HaTzafon. Um, we're now with the founder. Why don't you tell us what was the vision behind opening up the market? We started seven years ago with opening the first indoor market in Israel, which is Shuka Namal. And it was a, a really big surprise uh, of the need for such a change, of bringing all the best produce, the best restaurants. And um, after we saw that um, the culinary map has changed in Israel, we decided to go to this uh, second uh, adventure. The market is packed with 15 food stalls and shops, each featuring flavors from all around the world. 
we wanted to bring the best of in a, a, a smaller version that can be um, affordable to, to all, uh, all kind of audiences. We sell uh, uh, sandwiches, uh, contains meat, hamburgers, uh, hot dogs, uh, corned beef sandwiches, uh, chicken breast, uh, and seal on Wow, so the carnivores yeah. would really enjoy this one. We want to order something. I'm sure. hungry. What do you recommend? We have only five dishes in the menu. Everything is excellent. We are butchered for 45 years. The corned beef sandwich is excellent. Okay, we'll have the corned beef sandwich. Corned beef sandwich. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Looks amazing. Enjoy your meal. Look at that. Mm. That looks like a great sandwich. Now we just need to find somewhere to sit. That's good quality beef. The market features restaurants that are run by both established Israeli chefs and some new, passionate chefs with a big love for food. We have a few chefs here that are the most known and appreciated chefs in Tel Aviv. We have uh, David Frankel, which is the chef of uh, Pronto, the Tel Avivian Pronto. It's uh, one of the best, or maybe the, the best uh, Italian restaurants in, uh, in the heart of Tel Aviv. And he opened here the Pronto Kiosco, which is the younger sister of the big Pronto. It's faster, pizza, pasta, homemade. The chefs at Pronto were so committed in preserving that authentic Italian flavor, they brought the brick oven all the way from Italy. Since the market is situated in an area where some of the leading high-tech firms are, Shukta Fon's crowd is slightly different than the rest of the markets around the city. I'm working in this area for about three years. When the Shukta Fon was open, we started coming here we went to all, all the places here we've been eating in them and the experience is excellent because it's faster, it's quicker, you get your food. If you come with different guys who have different tastes, everybody can pick his own dish and we can sit outside and eat. So from our perspective, it's excellent. We come here every day. For those of you who love the Middle Eastern cuisine, restaurant Rakayom, translating to only today, offers just that. The creative menu changes daily and offers Israeli comfort foods accompanying colorful salads. We are now outside a food stall called Rak Hayom, which translates to only today. Wanna tell us what it's about? I will. So uh, today only, or only today, is a chef's restaurant and we uh, change our menu daily, uh, depending on the season and whatever we get freshest from the market. Uh, our chefs come in the morning and decide what to do, uh, especially for that day. Lunchtime is more of like a, a more of a hot stews and broths and vegan food and hot salads. Uh, evening time is more of a tapas bar changes. You can eat uh, small tapases next to drinks. So, uh, so it's whatever the chef feel like. So it's whatever the fish wants to do that day. And okay. And what what is this bell sound that I keep hearing? Just to, to people to take kind of to get a feel of the market, like this, uh -huh. put us inside the vibe of kind of being in a market. Uh -huh. and so what in the world is this? I'm trying to figure it out. There's a salad on top of what? An eggplant? So, okay. This is one of uh, uh, my favorite dishes here. Our menu changes every day, but this, this dish kind of stays every day because people love it and it's a unique uh, kind of special dish. It's actually cabbage uh, baked in raw trina, which trina here is uh, one of the most famous ingredients here in Israel and Middle East. The cabbage is then baked to perfection as it gets really soft and melts in your mouth. So for fresh, affordable and gourmet produce all available under one roof, look no further than Shuk Tzafon. Max, I have great news. For the first time ever, Tel Aviv is finally opening up its permanent venue for food trucks. The food truck trend is taking over the world and it seems like Tel Aviv has hopped on that food truck bandwagon by making a permanent home for several different food trucks, each serving unique delicacies. So let's check them out. Tel Aviv has finally embraced the culinary trend. Mobile vendors are setting up shop right on the promenade, serving tasty delights from all around the world, adding a new flavor to the city. We have this curry pan. This is deep fried bread, and inside it's a Japanese curry. If you want to try beef and vegetable. Vegetable. Thank you very much. 
It's like a big boikas, but Japanese style. With some of the biggest cities on earth now boasting gourmet food trucks, the movement that has the culinary scene buzzing around the world shows no signs of slowing down. Uh, we call the place food truck disco because the disco, the lights, they're changing all the time. So we are going to change the trucks all the time and to bring to the customers a lot of different uh, food. So what we are seeing here is only for tonight. Tomorrow could be a completely different... Uh... In a week, yeah. Originating in Los Angeles, the trend has been steadily growing in recent years. So I thought the best way to get into the food action was from the inside. Two. Of course. One Pokeball coming up. We have the Asian street food, we have dim sum. They have all kinds of dim sum, vegetarian, vegetables, tomato, fish, everything, all kinds of dim sum. We have also rice and curry. Actually what you need to do is to wait for the bread to come out, to throw from the toast. You put a little bit of chili aioli, it's mayonnaise with chili, a little bit of avocado, and a lot from the cookie salad. It's salmon, actually today it's salmon. It's cucumber, you have onion, special thing that inside the kitchen that I don't know exactly what inside it, but I know for sure that's very good. The mobile cuisine is beneficial for both the consumers and business owners. It allows foodies to offer their recipes to the public without the expense and hassle of opening a restaurant. It's easy for young chefs to come and not uh, pay a lot of money to open a place in Ibn Gevirol or Dizingo. They just take a food truck, they mix in the stuff that they need and they are starting to sell street food here in the middle of Tel Aviv in the sea view. We love the location because people could get their tan on and then come right across the street and grab something yeah. tasty. Here we are in front of a yet another awesome food truck. What kind of food do you serve here? We serve a typical South African street food called Bani Chow which is uh, curry, which we put inside bread. We have uh, three options. We do chicken, beef, and vegan curries to put in the bread. Which we have. I'll have a vegan curry. Wow. Thank you so much. I think I need two hands for this one. fish and chips, we have calamari and chips, which is really good. Uh, we have climate. Give me anything you just said. I don't care, it all sounds good. I will give you calamari and chips, because that's my fave. Um, would you like like a cocktail or something? I make the best ones. Gin, or arak, or ouzo? Well, since we are at a Greek stand, we'll go for ouzo. Now that we've sampled some flavors from around the world, let's hear what the locals and tourists have to say. So, so good, delicious. I love Asian food. It ran straight to um, this food truck right here. It's really amazing. There's so many people from all over the world. It's uh, really nice to you know, see different international people come here. Are you eating anything here? Have you oh, tried any good delights? Yeah, of course. There's like a burger with like a really yummy bun. Like melt in your mouth, yummy. Um, there's like a sushi donut. It's really yummy as well. How did you find yourself ending up here? I love food. Um, so I actually came here to Israel to get married in two weeks, and I'm eating my way around Tel Aviv one restaurant at a time, so I of course had to come here and try all the food. I was so passionate about it that I started an Instagram account called Holy Health, and I basically share foods that I eat daily, like foods at restaurant, um, things that I like to whip up at home, and just share my passion. So, no more running after the ice cream truck, guys, and no more greasy food vans. The gourmet food trucks are here to stay. Wow, Natalie, so many different foods and food from all around the world. It was cool exactly. to try all that stuff. What if I told you that we don't have to leave Israel to enjoy some Italian cuisine? Wow, that sounds good. You know, yeah. Italian food, they're known for the not just the pastas, but also the salads and the, the and desserts and the wine. Exactly, the wine. So we're going to go to Juno Wine Bar, which is right here in Tel Aviv. We're now 
here in Israel's most cosmopolitan city where nightlife is booming. And as a lover of wine, I decided what better place to visit than a nice, stylish, cozy wine bar that is inspired by the culture and cuisine of Italy. Whether you prefer red, white, sparkling, or dessert, Juno Wine Bar carries a serious collection. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, this is good wine. What are yes. we drinking here? It's a good word. Wine. Okay. Uh, white wine. This is an Israeli local That's wine. That's right, yeah. Speaking of Israeli wine, the local industry has developed significantly in recent decades. And although it is one of the smaller countries, Israel still manages to hold a reputation for producing high quality wine. I was working in the wine industry for a few years and my sister-in-law decided that she wanted a wine bar. And usually when she wants something, it's happened. That's the spirit. Ever since Juno's opening nine years ago, more and more wine bars have been opening up all around the city. It was uh, her uh, inspiration and my knowledge, and together we did it. Israeli wineries produce over 33 million bottles of wine a year. And with so many wines to choose from, it seems like the owners of Juno Wine Bar know a thing or two about the industry themselves. They can tell you that you don't need to buy a really expensive wine to enjoy it. Music to my ears. Before you try the expensive one, you have to know the, the, the medium range and the lowest range. Because if you don't know the, the, the value of the low range and the medium range, you will not appreciate the highest level. Cheers! The table was covered with delicious dishes that paired excellently with the wine. But what stood out to me was the not-so-traditional pizza made with beet sauce. Yummy, yummy. It's really nice and very thin, crunchy. You should taste it first. I'm okay. going to taste everything, don't yes. worry. <laughs> and actually we have here a prosciutto with beets, uh, with a camembert cheese. The cheese platter is uh, from an uh, Israeli boutique uh, cheese shop. We have here a uh, Bavarian blue and the gouda. We have uh, camembert and uh, boucher goat cheese. Yum, it all looks amazing. This is like a feast for the eyes yes. and for the tummy. Okay. Now you said this was with gargonzola cheese. Yes. And beet sauce instead of tomatoes. It has a very distinct flavor, the cheese. without ordering a cocktail. So, what do you have for us, bartender? Uh, I'm making a sort of a mellow cocktail, like a, call it a girly cocktail, okay. a fruity one. It's a mix of Campari, uh, which is an aperitivo, mixed with gin. Usually I use like a really regular gin with passion fruit. Yum, these colors are just delicious. Thank you so much. Enjoy. My favorite part of the day, <laughs> cocktail hour. Fruity, it's a little bit sour. You did a good job. Summery drink. Definitely summery. The laid-back, mature atmosphere at Juno Wine Bar is the ideal place for a fun dining experience. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us for another episode of Cruising Israel. We're so proud to have you with us. And don't forget to catch us next time as we cruise the country and show you the best Israel has to offer. Bye. Bye-bye.